This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is another day uh, walking on the topsoil. We are happy to uh, speak to you again from the city of Chandler, Arizona. New Vision Christian Fellowship is, is our church where I am the pastor. And it's a blessing, amen, to come into your homes or your place of business or wherever it is that you are viewing this. Amen. Here in Arizona, this is another hot day. Uh, today it reached at least 112. So those of you who are, are in uh, other places and it's cooler, well, I guess we are jealous of you today. Man, God is good. Before we go on to our lesson today, uh, we're going to pray. But let me give you the subject of the lesson. Uh, today's lesson uh, is on stewardship. I will say this uh, as uh, a pastor, and I guess the type of person I, that I am, one of the most difficult things for me to talk about is financing um, because I am a, a pastor and I do receive some of the funds that come into the church. It's difficult for me to talk to others about giving. So you pray for me as I go into this lesson Amen, that we will give you what God has given to us and that you will receive something. Now, for those of you who are not of, of our church, uh, please recognize as I am speaking today, uh, I want you to take heart and I want you to, to dig in to the lesson today because uh, there is a, a fiscal responsibility that you have as a member of whatever congregation that you are a part of. And it's important for you to, amen, to do those things outlined in the Word of God. Let's begin by praying. Eternal Father, we want to thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for allowing us the privilege that we have to come together and to speak the counsel of God. Father, we pray for those who are around the world today that are listening to us. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that before we even start the lesson that you'll begin to cultivate the hearts of your people that they will receive lord that that the seed will be planted on good ground that there will be an awakening to the responsibilities of us as people of god and father we pray for those that are still dealing with the COVID 19. we pray for those that are in hospitals and that are in their homes and unable to get out. We pray for those that are isolated, those that are despondent, those that are discouraged. And we ask my Father that you would just move and undertake and strengthen them in this hour. Father, we ask now that you would bless us as we go into this lesson and you would give us ears to hear and hearts to receive. This we pray in Jesus' name, amen. So as we've said, uh, the lesson tonight is going to be on stewardship. And um, uh, basically, uh, stewardship uh, is, is God's uh, ordained system of fiscal responsibility to the pastor and to the local church. Now, there are a number of, of uh, scriptures that we'd like to give and we're going to delve, delve into tonight beginning with Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, Genesis chapter 14, verse number 2, Malachi chapter 3, verses 8 through 11, Matthew 23 and 23, Luke chapter 18 and verse 1, Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, Luke 6 and 38, and 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 7. Now, I want uh, you to make sure that you got some of what God has said. Uh, you can't say that he, he was teaching and he didn't give us the word. Amen. You're going to get the word uh, on tonight. Amen. So we at uh, the um, New Vision Christian Fellowship, 
We believe that tithing and offerings is God's ordained system of financial responsibility to the pastor and to the local church. Um, God, in his infinite wisdom, came up with a plan of how uh, the, the church will be supported, how we will, it would allow us to continue um, the mission that God has given to us. And uh, many of the things that we do, it takes finance for us to get those things done. And so it's important for, for you and I to recognize that when we come into this thing uh, called Christianity, uh, it too uh, takes finances for it to operate. It's, a, it's interesting simply because of the, the time in which we live um, that uh, there are those who we see through social media uh, who have been blessed of God, who have large congregations, and, and because they are able to purchase large items uh, and this type of thing, it, it kind of places a damper in the spirits of many people when they see what the preacher have, has in comparison to what they have. And it, it puts, you know, um, a bad light sometimes on it. Uh, I'm not against a man prosperity. I'm not against uh, ministers of God being blessed. So we'll find in the Word of God of how God blessed those men and, and women of God. Um, so I'm not fighting against that, but I want you to understand that God holds uh, us leaders responsible for those things that come into the, the, the house of God. He holds us responsible. And if there is, uh, if there is a large congregation and there are many uh, that, that the person is being responsible for, uh, perhaps uh, they're, they're worthy of that. Even the scripture says, uh, give honor to those that, that um, uh, labor, but double honor to those that labor in the gospel. And we'll, we'll, we'll uh, get into a few things um, later on uh, that we find in Corinthians that'll bring light to that. All right, let's begin, amen, tonight by talking about tithing. Now, tithing is God's method of provision for the economic needs of the pastor and those in um, full-time ministry. Tithing is 10% of your financial increase, whether uh, the finances come from uh, your salary, your job, whether they come from gifts that you receive, uh, whether it comes from profits uh, that you make from sales of property, uh, it, it's, it's income, amen. And so uh, God says that 10% um, of that, which is a tithe, amen, uh, belongs to the Lord. Now, um, the tithe, um, if you're looking at your workbook, it says how much is a tithe, and, and the answer was 10%. The tithe or 10% is a representative of your entire increase. And in giving it, God hollows or consecrates the 90%. Um, it's kind of interesting to me uh, that when, when someone uh, has a little money, you know, they, they get $100 and um, they're, it's okay. They, they can uh, pay their tithe, you know, $10 off of that. But it amazes me when people get a, a windfall, uh, well, if it's $100,000, uh, then uh, they say, oh, no, no, uh, $10,000 is just too much. It's still 10%. What we've got to remember this is, is that 10% is 10%. Amen. Uh, what I mean by that is, is, is that uh, whether it's uh, $10 out of a hundred, or whether it's a hundred out of a thousand, or it's a thousand out of ten thousand, it's still ten percent. And for some of you who who uh, are blessings to our churches, a man that that give your tithing uh, are larger than other people. Can I say this? 
uh, though the dollar amount may be more, you have not done anything more than your brother or your sister who, who makes less. Because whether you make um, $5,000 in a month and, and are able to give $500 and someone only makes $500 a month and are only able to give $50, each of those are 10%. And what you have done is what God has, has asked of you to do. Um, uh, so what we learn then is is that the the, the blessing is is not only in giving of the of the tithing because that belongs to God that doesn't belong to you. Uh, it's in the offerings that we find that God's real blessings occur. All right. Um, was the giving of tithe before the law? That's a good question. Tithing dates back to Abraham, but the principle of something being holy unto the Lord goes back even further to the book of Genesis, amen, when uh, there was the Garden of Eden. Uh, you will remember in the garden story where the Lord told uh, Adam, he said, Adam, uh, I've got a lot of trees in this garden and you can freely eat of all of them except one. And that is the tree of life. Adam, I don't want you to eat thereof. For the day you eat thereof is the day you will surely die. So uh, what the principle of it is, is that there are some things that wholly belong to the Lord. It's not yours. It's the Lord's. Um, uh, we uh, had begun in our church to, to uh, say to the uh, um, to the saints that uh, we don't pay tithe, but we return to God what belongs to him. Because the idea of pain uh, gives us the impression that, that we owe something. But when we talk about a man tithing, uh, it is returning that to God, that which belongs to him. That's why in Malachi uh, chapter three, he says, um, he says that, you have robbed me. He says, he says, how have we robbed me? How have we robbed you? And he says, you've robbed me in tithing and in offerings. So what he is saying is, is that when it comes to the tithing, it's something that does not belong to the individual, but it belongs to God. And so what God is saying, this is holy mine. This, this belongs to me. Uh, amen. And when we do that, uh, what God does is he hollows or he, he sanctifies or he, amen, consecrates the 90%. He allows that 90% to do much more than what 100% could do. And I don't know about you, but I've seen God do it many times over. And when we can get this understanding in our, in our hearts and in our minds um, that that there are some things that don't belong to us. It, it's amazing to me how each of us who have had jobs, a man working um, in companies and things like this, uh, we may receive, um, let me say, make it easy, let me say uh, $20 an hour. That, that, that's, make it, that's easy for me to think. So you make $20 an hour. But when you think about that, when you get your paycheck, it's not $20 because what has been taken out is, is taxes, federal taxes, state taxes, and amen there, there's a social security taxes, those things that, that come off the top that you don't even see. Now we may grumble and, and, and complain, but the fact of the matter is, you're not tapping into that because we, we already say it in our mind that this is something that I cannot get right now. It belongs to someone else. And so when we talk then about tithing, what we've got to recognize is that we've got to kind of place that in our, in our, our heads so that when we get our finances, that there is a certain part that is not mine. And what I'm simply doing is returning it back to its owner. When I was 
a, a, a young uh, lad about uh, maybe 10 years old or so. I was coming home from school one day and I saw uh, a wallet on the floor, uh, excuse me, on the ground. And I picked the wallet up and there was, there was money in the wallet. And I, I came home, I got home and I gave it to my mom and my mom in turn uh, looked up who it belonged to. Back in those days, uh, we, we uh, uh, had the phone books and, and most of the people, their addresses and phone numbers were in uh, the phone book. And she was able to contact uh, the, the, the gentleman that uh, owned the, the property. And um, a day or so later, he came to the house and uh, we gave him his wallet along with the money that was in the wallet. And he, he blessed uh, little George here um, with, with a, what you might call a finder's fee. Now, in my giving him the wallet and the money, uh, I was not paying him, but I was simply returning to him what belonged to him. It was not mine. Had I taken some of the money and uh, used it um, to buy candy or whatever, uh, that would have been stealing because the money didn't belong to me. What I simply did was to return to the owner what belonged to him. And so if you could see tithing that way is, is that it is, it is giving back to God what belongs to him. And as I said earlier, uh, God in his, in his infinite wisdom says, I want to, to put in place a, a financial plan, how to benefit uh, the church of God, or in, that, in the case in, in Genesis and Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and so on, it was the children of Israel. For the children of Israel, they had an entire Amen tribe uh, that received off of the tithing, and that was the Levites. The Levites were those who, amen, supported the church. They were the supports of the church, and they were doing that full time. There were those who took care of the tabernacle, and amen, had to bring in the different uh, sheep and, and all the different um, uh, sacrifices that came into it, and they were the ones that, that had to take care of those things. And so they themselves did not have any uh, property um, in Israel. All the different tribes, the other 11 tribes, had property that was, that was designated to them. But those that were Levites, they did not have property. And so they lived off of what was brought in by the other a, a tribes. Amen. And so that's how um, they were able to continue things um, in that day. Uh, as I said, was, was uh, tithing before the law? Yes. It dated back, um, we can go back to Abraham um, in Genesis chapter 14, verses uh, 18 through 20. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, uh, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered mine enemies into thine hand. And he gave him tithe of all. So now we're, we're seeing that term here, tithes. Amen. And so Melchizedek, uh, the, the, the scripture uh, tells us later, uh, had no, no uh, beginning or end. He had, had no birth date. Amen. Yeah, it was uh, Melchizedek uh, was, was the priest of the Most High God. Uh, it, this is the first time that we're finding that, that it is being given uh, back to God. God is uh, uh, Abraham or Abram here was giving him uh, tithing. Because he had been so good to him, uh, he says that, that the Most High uh, have delivered me out of the hands of my enemies. And so because God has been so good, 
I've got to give back to him what is his. Is there a blessing in my giving? Absolutely. God promises to abundantly bless you and to protect your possessions. And I can truly say this, that I have uh, I've been a, a, a tither, amen, uh, most of my life. And I say most of my life because uh, early on when I first um, got married and things were, were rough and this kind of thing, I kind of vacillated a little bit. But I quickly learned that giving to God, giving what belongs to Him, amen, is always the best thing to do. And God will protect your stuff. Amen. That's what I learned. And so I can't say that it's been my, my 51 years of being saved, but I can, I can surely look, look at 35 plus years of, of uh, constantly giving to God what belongs to Him. And uh, as I said, I learned that God uh, can protect your stuff. Uh, we were thinking back uh, of a, a number of cars or a few cars that I've had in my life that lasted a long, long time. Amen. And uh, God continued to bless those vehicles that they continue to, to, to move forward. Amen. And I believe it's because God honored uh, the, the giving of, of my tithe. He honored, and so he protected different things, amen, in my life. And I can certainly say that I, I believe that, that God uh, protects my body and protects the things that are, are connected to me simply because I choose. I've made a choice to give back to God. And not only my, my, my tithes, I, I give my offerings. And when the Lord uh, speaks to my heart and tells me to give to a certain ministry, when he speaks to my heart and tells me to give to a certain individual, when he speaks to my heart and tells me to bless somebody, I try my best to not overthink it, but simply to do it. Just if God is telling me to do something, let's just go ahead and do it. Now, sometimes we don't recognize if God is telling you to do something, but can I give you um, a little wisdom here? The, the devil is not going to tell you to do something good. He's not going to tell you to bless somebody. He's not going to tell you, amen, to bless a ministry and this type of thing. He's not going to do that. So when God prompts you uh, uh, and tells you to do a particular thing, if it, if it adds to a person's life, it multiplies to a, a person's life, chances are it's God. And let me tell you this, if it's not God, God is still going to bless you for it. The Bible said that he that giveth to the poor lendeth to God. So if I give to someone, uh, sometimes things happen and we see people on, on the streets and they're, 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 they're out, what we call begging, and uh, we, we uh, say, I'm not going to give that person because I know they're going to just drink it up or they're going to do this with it or they're going to do that with it. Well, the Bible is still the Bible. And God says, he that giveth to the poor lendeth to God. Now, when the term, we use the term lending, means that it's going to come back. And when you lend to God, it's going to come back with interest. I hear the word of God saying, cast your bread upon the water, and after many days it'll come back to you again. Well, I'm a witness, brothers and sisters, that if you cast your bread upon the water, it'll come back buttered, and will come back with jam because God is not going to be outdone in giving. He's going to give you more than you give to him. And I thank God that we, we have an abundance God, a God of blessings that knows how to bless you. Amen. So um, Genesis uh, chapter 2, we learned about um, giving to God, giving back to him. Uh, Genesis 14. Uh, we just read that, that Abram gave uh, to the Most High, and, and he was blessed. Uh, in, in so doing, let me, let me just uh, drop in here um, about uh, giving uh, that when we give to God, 
we sing the song, you can't beat God giving, no matter how you try. Um, uh, this is something that, that I uh, challenge you to do. Give to God. See if, 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 if he will not bless you. He says, no, I'm, I'm God and you can't beat me. And when we try him, which we're going to find out in, in Malachi here, uh, he's going to put up a challenge. He's going to put up a challenge. Now, let's let's read that. Uh, Matthew, um, excuse me, Malachi chapter three, verse eight through 12 says, bring you all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and prove me now herewith or test me, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. I, I want that kind of blessing. Not only that, he says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time of the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all the nations shall call you blessed, and ye shall be a delightsome uh, land, saith the Lord of hosts. So he says, now if you do this, uh, prior to this, uh, uh, in, in verses 1 uh, through uh, 7, it sets the stage uh, for uh, Israel. And the prophet is, is saying to them, uh, you've gone away from God. He says, you've gone away from me. And he says, well, how uh, have we gone away from him? Because he says, I want you to return to me. And they say, return to you? What do you mean, return to you? He says, how, how is this happening? And he says, well, he says, because he says, you've robbed me. He says, we robbed you. How, how have we robbed you? And he says, in tithing and in offerings. And then um, the scripture goes on to talk about being cursed with a curse and this type of thing. Um, but he then gives them the remedy. He says, bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse. I want you to notice something. He says, bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse. Bring all the 10% into the, into the storehouse. Why does he, he use that term, all? What, is, what does all mean? All means all. Inclusive. Bring the whole thing. Uh, I want uh, to say to some of you who, who uh, may uh, write on, on your envelopes and, and this type of thing, and you say, well, well, I'm going to give this. This is going to be my tithe. Um, if it's not all the 10 percent, then you're giving an offering to the Lord. And I encourage you to do that. But it, it, it is it, you're, you're not really coming under a man and the blessing of the, the tithing. You're not coming under it because um, he says under that. He says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. In other words, he says, I'm going to bring your stuff under protection. He says, he says, when you do this, then I will do this. And so yeah, I just simply want to say that, that you're, you're giving an offering to the Lord and continue to do that until you are able to be built up to give all your tithe and, uh, unto the Lord. He says that there may be meat or provision in mine house. And test me now there, therewith, saith the Lord, if I will not open you the windows of heaven. Now, there are those who, who, who speak of how God opens the window of heaven uh, to us. Uh, for, for many of us, it's, it's every other uh, Friday, amen, when we get our paycheck. Uh, those of you who, who um, uh, get your check in the mail uh, uh, via a man it being social security or what have you, um, uh, you get a monthly check. That's when he's opening up the windows of heaven. But I'm a witness that God can do so much more than that because uh, oftentimes we, we look at what's coming in and not really looking at the full measure of this thing. The full measure of this thing is, is, is that oftentimes God will, will bless you uh, with getting discounts on certain things. Um, 
God will, will have someone to do something for you. Uh, I don't think we, we uh, need to be, um, uh, how should I put it? There is the letter of the law and there is the spirit of the law. Uh, I, I don't think that uh, when uh, we're, we're giving um, someone um, buys dinner for you and you say, how much is that dinner? And I got to give 10% of it to the Lord. You know, I don't think that we ought to be that uh, technical. But the spirit of, of, of the law is simply saying that, that your increase, you know, give, give back to the Lord 10%. There are those who, who uh, question whether you should, should give 10% uh, on your gross income, 10% on your net income. Uh, I am not one that is going to argue those points. I'm simply going to say that you should need to be led by the Lord. Uh, do as the Lord is asking of you to do. Amen. Um, so. He says that he'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings that there sh shall not be room enough to receive it. Um, there are times in which God does do things, amen, and it overwhelms us. And, and I don't know about you, but I, I kind of like those kind of blessings when God does something that overwhelms us, amen. He says, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. In other words, that which is going to eat you up, he'll rebuke it. Uh, some of that uh, oftentimes we're, we here in Arizona, um, he rebukes the devourer. Perhaps one of the ways that he can rebuke the devourer is, is to, to bring your, your um, uh, electric bill down. That can rebuke the devourer. In other words, eating away at the monies that you do have. Uh, most of us are not farmers and uh, in that day, rebuking the devourer was those that were, that were coming in to eat up the crop, okay, uh, or your harvest. So today, what that would mean is what is eating up your, your finances. And so when we don't do as God is, is asking of us to do, uh, we're putting ourselves subject to the devourer. That'll eat up what we have. And oftentimes, what, what we find is, is that uh, you have so much money, uh, or I've been there, um, where you, you started, you got paid, you had uh, so much money, and then uh, halfway through the week, you have nothing. In other words, things have eaten it up. Well, uh, he says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. How does he do that? Oftentimes he does that uh, with wisdom. He gives you wisdom how to use that 90% that he's given you. That 90% rather that you have left, that, that is, is yours. And he's going to look at what it is that you're doing with what is yours. Amen. That stewardship, that which is yours, what do you do with that? And God knows how to multiply that which he has given you. And he says, this is yours. Um, uh, I said to my, my wife used to say, and I kind of uh, corrected her, uh, she used to say, you know, this is yours, Lord, this is your money. And I had to say, well, no, uh, he, he gave the money to you. It's your money. Now, what you do with it uh, is, is, um, is a direct, uh, has direct implications of your heart or what it is that you're doing. Because the 90% belongs to you. That's why the offerings come out of the 90%. What do you now, because the other, oh, you know, wasn't yours. The 10% wasn't yours. It was the Lord's. So you just gave back to him. And this was his way, again, of, of taking care of the man of God, taking care of uh, whoever the pastor is, and this type of thing. And l let, me, let, me, um, uh, mm, let me go somewhere. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 11, uh, before I lose that thought. Um, this is, this is uh, 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 Apostle Paul, and Apostle Paul talks to the church at Corinth, and this is in the New Living uh, Version. He says, we have planted God's word among you. Is it too much to expect you to give us what we need to live each day? In other words, the, uh, 
your, your pastor, your leader, uh, he or she, amen, those who are, are in, in ministry, they, they are, are, are dealing with your spirit man, that which is going to live forever. It's trying to get you, amen, in the path where you need to be so you'll make it to heaven, amen. So your, this deals with your eternity, your eternal life. When the man or the woman God preaches and teaches and, 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 and prays for you when you're sick and all of these different things, counsels you and all of this stuff. Apostle Paul says, well, I've given you God's word to, to help you, uh, to counsel you, to give you what you need, you know, when you're depressed, when you're oppressed, when you when you're, uh, feel uh, uh, defeated. He says, I've given you what God has given me to give to you. He says, is it, is it, is it so much that you make sure that, hey amen, I have something to eat tonight? It may not be uh, filet mignon, but I, I at least have a hamburger. Is it, it, is it asking much? And so oftentimes what happens, uh, I'm going here and there, here and there, uh, but oftentimes what happens is, is that we, we look, look at the pastor and, and sometimes we, we, uh, we look at, the finances that come in, uh, but on your job, let me say this, on your job, uh, not only uh, are you given, uh, we, we said $20 an hour, or $15 an hour, $10 an hour, whatever it is, uh, but most companies, or many companies, I should say, uh, have benefits that are attached to that, that you're not actually paying for. There are benefits that, that your, uh, uh, your uh, employer does for you. Uh, some of you uh, have better benefits than others. They have medical. Well, you say, well, they're taking so much out of, out of my check. But yeah, you're not paying at all, though. Your, your, your employer is paying more, amen, uh, a certain amount that you don't have to pay for. So that's a, that's, that's a blessing. You don't think about that. So you could, in, in essence, you can, you can think how uh, that is a greater blessing to you. And you think about uh, those, and I encourage you, those of you who are blessed uh, to have uh, a company that, that will match uh, your 401k, the, your, your, um, your monies, the funds that you place in there. Listen, let me tell you something. If, if I had that right now, I would, I would be putting in as much money into that as I possibly could. I would make sure that I, I put more in there if they're going to match it. I'm talking about matching funds because matching funds are free money. That's free money. If I put $100 in every two weeks and my employer puts another $100 in, my God, that is, that is, a, that is a, a serious increase. Amen. And God says, take advantage of these things. Take advantage of them. You know, learn to live with less. Amen. Because what you're doing is you're preparing yourself for the future. And oftentimes, especially uh, many of us who are African-Americans, we don't think 10 years down the line. We don't think 20 years down the line. We just think 10 minutes down the line. We just think 10 days down the line. And you've got to open up your understanding that God is giving you a blessing. He's saying, I'm giving you wisdom, amen. And so he, he wants to see what you're going to do with the 90% that he has given you. Boy, I'm, I'm, I'm way away from where uh, I started, but, but uh, this, is, this is, I believe, what the Lord is saying to us, that he will, he will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time of the field, saith the Lord. He says that, that I am, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to use wisdom. I'm going to tell you what to do with this. Uh, oftentimes, uh, uh, some of the wisdom that God may give you with that 90% uh, is, is uh, don't be quick to do a particular thing. Uh, here, here's a good word of wisdom. Research. Research a thing out before you do something. Amen. Um, uh, oh, I found, I found a, 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 something on sale. Well, okay, amen. That, that's, that's wonderful. But uh, if you in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct that path, 
you may find out that, that tomorrow, instead of it being 25% um, uh, off, God knows that, hey, hold off on buying that because next week it's going to be 50% off. In all that ways, acknowledge him. He'll direct thy path. He's going he's gonna to look at that 90% that you have, and he's going to give you wisdom. So it's not eating away at that which you have. Amen. Uh, so uh, I, I lost my, my, my train of thought that took me there, but, but we're going to move on. Offerings are free will in nature given above your tithing. Offerings are used for the administration and daily ma uh, maintenance of the church and its ongoing mission. It is the provision for the church's vision. I say it again. It is the provision. God gives the church a vision, uh, wh whatever your, whoever your, your leader is, and, and said, this is, this is what the church wants to do. God is leading us to do this year or, 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 or this decade or what have you. Uh, it is through the offerings that, amen, that vision, we have the financial support to see that through. Now, God, uh, when, it, when we talk about, about offerings, again, that's a part of that 90%. And God says, now, I'm going to see what's in your heart. I'm going to, uh, that's going to be a challenge. Because he says, given it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. For by the, uh, the same measure that ye meet or you give, it shall be given unto you again. So, um, when we talk about giving and we say, well, I, I want to be a strong supporter of the church, it begins with giving of our tithe, which again is something that was not yours in the first place. It was the Lord's. Okay. And again, that is for, for the, um, the upkeep of, of, uh, of the, the pastor or, or those that are in um, full-time ministry. But this is for the daily maintenance and administration of the Lord, for the lights and, and for all the things that, that go on, uh, the, the rental or the, or the uh, mortgage of the church, uh, all the things to keep the church going on. That's what the offerings are for. But then there are other things. Uh, it also says that it's, it's for how the message of the kingdom is funded, how the outreach is funded. Amen. And uh, I believe that we uh, at New Vision Christian Fellowship, uh, we strive to do that. And uh, the majority of the finance that come into our church are tithing. And all the tithe does not go to this pastor, does not go to me, because we make sure that all the needs of the church are met. Amen. All the needs of the church are met. Now, in the Old Testament, God required at least five offerings of the children of Israel. There was the burnt offering, there was the grain offering, there was the peace offering, the sin offering, as well as the trespass offering. And when you listen to some of, of those from uh, different um, uh, church programs on TVN and, and on the Word Channel and Inspirational Channel, those type of things, um, uh, they'll tell you uh, it's around Pentecost and, and we, uh, there, there are certain times of, of, of the year in which the Lord would open up the windows of heaven. And, and so they, they, they talk to you about at that moment it's time for you to give. Uh, but I simply say this to you, that you need to listen to the Lord and have an ear because um, I've learned uh, to listen to him. And um, um, oftentimes when, when God begins to, to, to challenge us, uh, uh, he says, I want you to test me. If you hear my voice and I tell you to do a particular thing, uh, there is a reason for it. There's a twofold reason. There is something that must be funded. And so the Lord says, I need to have some folk that have a heart for me to give, <clears throat> excuse me, to give. There may be some needs, <clears throat> excuse me, there may be some needs uh, 
uh, special needs that come into to the church, uh, whether it, it is funding someone who's going overseas, um, uh, different projects that are, are in different places uh, uh, to, to feed the homeless and this kind of thing. There may be special things. Uh, often, sometimes it's, it's just there in the church that there is a need, uh, something has broken in the church and we need to fund a particular thing or we need to do a particular thing. God has said to the pastor, you know, God has said that we're going to move into another uh, piece of land. And so that's not going to just happen, but God needs to use somebody to get it done. So uh, oftentimes the God will, will touch on, on the hearts of men and women to give. And they become, amen, uh, that provision for the vision. They become the provider of the vision. They, they are the funders of uh, the vision. And so uh, in, in the Old Testament, there were a number of things, uh, offerings that were required. Um, but we are under the New Testament. Uh, we don't have that. But the Lord says that he wants us to um, uh, give free will offerings. Whatever in your heart to give. Uh, and so we have to um, look to that and say, well, God, I'm, I, what is it that, that you want me to do, to do? That's why he says you can't beat me giving. You know, uh, you can't beat God giving. So if you're taking of that which belongs to you now, the 90% belongs to you, and you're saying, God, I want to I wanna be a blessing. Um, there, are, there are times, um, I, I, in a way, it's, it, it's hard for me to, to talk about some things because uh, I know that if I do things and I say them openly, um, that perhaps that's, um, my reward. Uh, you look at me and say, oh, look at pastor. Oh, look at bishop. Bishop gave this and bishop gave that. And then I get a, a little, little swollen head because someone has said, oh, good job. Good. No, I don't want that. What I want is for the Lord to bless me because when the Lord starts blessing me, amen, um, the devil can't touch that. When God starts blessing me, and again, oftentimes the blessings are not just a financial blessing, but it's, it could be your health. Amen. I believe that I have been uh, sustained in the things that I, um, in my health, uh, because of the things that I give. I believe that. Because if, if I follow what the Lord is saying, then I believe that God is, is going to bless me. Uh, one one of, of, of the, the pastors said that, if you take care of God's business, he'll take care of yours. And I believe that to be a true statement. If we take care of God's business, now God's business does not um, um, uh, ex uh, exclude the world. God's business uh, is not inclusive to just the pastor or those in the church. But when we take care of God's business, when God speaks to us and tells us to, to do a particular thing, when we take care of his business, you see, we now become the agent of the Lord when he gives us an, an instruction. When he tells us, I want you to do a particular thing, we are st now acting as an anointed messenger of God. And sometimes that anointed messenger of God uh, is to hand somebody uh, uh, $50. That anointed messenger of God, amen, is to, is to take someone out to dinner. I remember, uh, it's been a number of years ago, uh, but uh, the, the Lord spoke to us to uh, just to take, take a, a, uh, this, this uh, uh, couple out to eat and not knowing how that taking them to eat would impact their life because what ended up happening is, is that, that they had been at a time in which they were despondent, they were discouraged, uh, but me simply taking out time, and, and I was not a pastor then, amen, uh, I was a saint. And as a saint, I just took them out and, and just blessed them. Uh, so much, so much, so much. Um, let me say this, I'm a father. 
And when I see a need in the house, okay, I just go ahead and do it. Why? Because there's a need. There, there is, is, is nothing that I'm looking for. I'm not looking for, for someone to pat me on the back. I'm not looking for, for the family to say, oh, God bless, oh, Father, you have done this for us. No, uh, it's just in us to do when we see a need. You as a child of God, when you see a need and you respond to that need, don't do it as expecting something in return, but I tell you, when you act in the, in the, as an agent of God, God will richly bless you. He's going, to, he's going to give to you as you have given to him, but it's going to come back, amen, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. That's what God says, give, and it shall be given unto you. He doesn't say, give to the church, and it shall be given unto you. Or give to the pastor, it's, it, it's anniversary time, give to the pastor, and it'll be given unto you. No, you ought to make this a, a weekly thing. Uh, when I was, when I was uh, working a 40-hour um, a, a week and I was out in the community, every week I would say, uh, at least weekly, sometimes it was daily, Lord, who can I bless today? Lord, Lord, Lord who can I be a blessing to? And I remember that there are times in which um, that I bought food for someone, and I remember going to one of the uh, uh, one of the, the, the saints had a uh, a barbecue place there in in Phoenix, uh, the Rosses. They had a barbecue place there, and uh, uh, I want to go and I want to support our own. And I went, and they had some real good barbecue too. And I was there, and there was a a, a lady that was outside of there, and she was wanting money, and so I said. Well, no, I'm not going to give her money. Well, what I'll do is I'll buy her something to eat. And I did. And um, now, now let me say this. Boy, I'm getting off, off here. Let me say this too. Um, it, if I give something to someone, I'm going to give them what I would do. In other words, if, I, if I'm going to eat something and I'm inviting someone to eat, I'm not gonna say now. You need to you need to uh, only eat off of this this portion, you know, of the menu, okay, you know. But I'm expecting that that you can eat what I eat. Uh, so this this lady, uh, I I was buying myself, uh, I believe, with some ribs, and so I bought her the same thing. And uh, you know what she did. She ate a little bit of it, and she left the rest and walked away. And the brother and sister that owned the place, they said, Elder McCree, yeah, I know that lady, and, you know, it was a, it was a waste, you know. But I didn't look at it that way, because the Word of God is still the Word of God. He says um, that he that giveth to the poor lendeth to God. And I received a great blessing because of that. Even though she did not do as she should with it, okay, God still blessed me. And what I'm saying is, is that we need to have an attitude that we want to, to give a man uh, as an agent of the Lord. Um, and, and what I've learned with giving is this, that, that we finances uh, one of the things that uh, the terms that are used um, uh, with finances is, is, is the word flow. Finances flow. And you as a child of God ought to, ought to be like that river that flows. You ought to uh, let stuff come through you and you be a blessing to someone else. And when you find yourself being a blessing to someone else, God will continue to feed you. Amen. Feed you as you feed someone else. Amen. We, we received a great blessing from the Lord this year, and it's happening in, in, in other uh, times where, where someone says, you know, uh, there was one family that said, you know, Pastor, 
um, uh, you, you, you blessed us when we were down, you did this for us and that for, for us, and, and when God gave, gave them a, um, a, a, a blessing, uh, a, a huge blessing, they said, we want, we want to, to, to deposit now into you, and we deposit it into our ministry. That's the way it works. Now, everybody doesn't do that, amen, but it is not my responsibility to have someone to give back. It is my responsibility to, to give. And when we give, amen, God says, I'm going to bless you. And I have seen him blessing us over and over again. And I remember times when I did not have, amen, and God blessed us. I tell the story, and we're almost out of time. And I tell the story when, uh, amen, I uh, had very little gas. I, I, matter of fact, I, gas tank was on empty. And I, I, I had um, $5 or $2. It was, it was something uh, very, uh, it wasn't much. And back then, you know, uh, you, can, you can get more uh, gas than you can now, but it wasn't that much, okay? Um, it, I can't remember now, $2 or something like that, $5 or whatever. But it was during the gas shortage, and so gas was higher then. But I had uh, gone to this gas station. Uh, those of you who are from Portland, uh, at, at the corner of um, uh, MLK and Broadway, amen, uh, that gas station. <laughs> uh, went there and uh, said $2 uh, gas, because they pumped pump the gas there. And the man um, lost track or something all I had was two dollars, and and he kept the thing going, and and gave me a a full tank of gas. And I said, and he realized his mistake. Oh my God, you know, boom. But I said, man, all I have is two dollars. And he says, I know, I know, you know. And um, so God bless me. I I had been doing some things for the church, amen. Um, prior to this, um, and um, so I was blessed. And so uh, a few weeks had, uh, went by and I was on empty again. I said, well, I know where to go. So I went back over to that gas station and there was um, one of the brothers, bro brother Wesley Chambers was with me. And I told Wesley what had happened. I said, I'm going back to that same place, man. And so I went back and I think that man recognized who I was because when I said $2, please, and my, my tank was on empty, $2, please. He did it, $2 exact, boom. And I said, well, uh, God is still good. And uh, Wesley told me, uh, he said, yeah, that don't happen all the time. I said, okay, all right. I turned the gas, uh, the, the, uh, the car on, and the gas tank went from that end, and it started going. I said, Wesley, look, 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 look. And it went all the way and rested on full. And he said, uh, man, there's something wrong with your, 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 your thing. There's something wrong. I said, no, that's the Lord. There's something wrong with your gauge, man. But do you not know that I, I went weeks on that $2? Weeks. You know, and, and what I'm saying to you is that if you give to God, he'll give back to you. I'm about out of time. I didn't get, get to all of the things that I want to talk about. When you have an opportunity, uh, read um, uh, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, and verse, around verse 7, where it says, you must each decide in your heart how much to give. And do not give reluctantly or in response to pressure. It's important for me to say that. Do not give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. And that is in the New Living Translation. Uh, so let's, let, let's recognize that, that uh, when we give to God, He will take care of us. Um, also what we can give is our talents, which are, which are our natural and spiritual gifts that God has placed within us. Uh, those are things that we ought to give. Um, 
Uh, he desires that when we give our 10%, he gives, we give 10% of our time and our talent to bless the body of Christ. Amen. Out of time, uh, let's pray. Father, we want to thank you again for another day. We thank you for this hour of sharing. And Father, we ask that uh, we will be agents of you and that we will be angels, Lord Jesus, for you. When we see that there are needs, that we will respond to the needs, knowing full well, God, that you are uh, the author and the finisher of our lives. And, and though it's our choice to give, Father, when we make that choice, you put a blessing, you put a stamp of approval on that which we are doing. And Father, that you will bless us for us. Father, as, as we end this lesson today, we ask that you would just bless all of the homes that are uh, listening to this uh, lesson today. Father, we pray that it did not fall on a stony ground, did not fall by the wayside, it did not fall upon thorns or thistles, but this seed, this good seed, fell upon good ground, and it will bring forth 100-fold. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you in Jesus' name. We'll see you at our next lesson or worship service.